we're going to be palpating some ligaments of the upper extremity starting central off the sternum. So the first thing that I'm actually going to do is finding the manubrium of the sternum, the upper part here. I'm going to go right up to the very top and drop into the jugular notch. And there's a ligament that connects between the two clavicles called inter or intraclavicular. So I'm just going to roll my finger onto the top and I'm going to do a pressure in an anterior posterior direction right on the top of the sternum. So inter or intraclavicular ligament is right in this location. The second ligament in very similar and almost blended together with that is where the clavicle and sternum meet at the sternoclavicular joint. I'm actually just going to grab your clavicle for a second and move that up and down so you can see a little bit of that motion right here at our sternoclavicular joint. So ligaments holding that clavicle and sternum together so I can do a little bit of a cross fiber strum of more this anterior fiber. It does go towards the posterior as well but we won't be able to kind of hook our fingers in behind that because of some of the musculature. So interclavicular and sternoclavicular. And while we're here, I'm just going to go down to sternocostal. So for this, I'm actually going to ask her to take her opposite hand and just push down on breast tissue for me. And do I have permission to work above your hand? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to follow down. Here's rib number one, costal cartilage. Here's rib number two, costal cartilage. So in between the costal cartilage and the sternum, we have ligaments running back and forth, basically holding those two together. So if we were going to do some cross fiber, that's going to be going up and down. This is underneath pectoralis majors attachment here. So there is going to be a very kind of hard differentiation between what is tendon versus what is ligament, but just giving you that concept. So there's a few ligaments on this more medial end of the clavicle, and now we're gonna to work towards the lateral end of the clavicle. You can return your hand to your side if you like. So as we're working towards that more lateral in the concave aspect of the clavicle, the next bony landmark I'm gonna be looking for is the coracoid process of the scapula. So you can see a nice soft tissue indent. I'm gonna work a little bit more lateral. Here is her coracoid process. I got three points around it. So superior to the coracoid and inferior to the clavicle, there's two ligaments that make up the coracoclavicular, the more medial of the two. So I'm gonna go straight superior and slightly more medial and sink in with a decent amount of pressure and then go in more of a medial lateral direction. This is the conoid ligament right in here. And if I go directly above the coracoid and underneath the clavicle and go back and forth, this is the trapezoid ligament. So those two together make up the coracoclavicular. And then there's a third one in this location. I'm just gonna follow the back, the spine of the scapula, which turns into the acromion process and follow that around towards the front. So between the coracoid process and the anterior part of the acromion is the coracoacromial ligament. So I'm gonna be able to palpate that like so. Again, sinking in and doing a cross fiber strum for it. So three ligaments coming off this coracoid process, connecting to both the clavicle and the scapula, where this clavicle meets the acromion process. So I'm on the posterior aspect of the clavicle. I'm kind of pushing it forward a little bit to give you that idea that I'm still on clavicle. This is where it's starting to meet. And then on the front aspect of it, right in here, this is the anterior part of the clavicle. This is the posterior. So right in this location is your acromioclavicular ligament that's holding this AC joint together. We'll see if I can do a little bit of motion. So I'm gonna grab her acromion and grab her clavicle, and I'm gonna push one forward and hold the acromion still. So you can see her AC joint moving back and forth. So therefore, if I'm strumming with fiber, and then if I went more anterior posterior, I would be going against the acromioclavicular fibers. So these are the ligaments kind of holding that lateral aspect of the clavicle is the acromion, and fairly common injury is to tear at this AC joint. Okay, so that's most of the ligaments of the clavicle, and we're just gonna finish this video off with a few of the glenohumeral area. So one of the more superficial ones 
that can sometimes get injured is helping hold the long head tendon of the biceps brachii in place. This is called the transverse humoral. So this is the long head tendon of biceps and running from the greater to lesser tubercle of the humerus. It runs transversely, which is why it gets its name, transverse humoral. I'm just gonna grab her arm, bring her into a little internal external rotation, and then I'm gonna do a little twang on her biceps tendon, which you can see going back and forth right in here. But if I go to the more proximal part of that and I would go up and down, this would be me cross-fibering this transverse humoral ligament, which is helping hold that head inside the bicipital groove of the humerus. And lastly, this is gonna be pretty tricky to feel, um, but just kind of describing a part of the humeral, glenohumeral joint, there's gonna be multiple fibers holding the humerus towards the glenoid cavity. So you have superior, you have anterior, and you have kind of inferior fibers of the glenohumeral joint, which is also kind of a part of its capsule. So this is really difficult for you to feel. Um, what you might be able to do is apply some traction down on the arm as you're basically trying to create some space in that joint and sink in, um, but getting an idea that the fibers are on the top of the humerus, underneath the acromion, so you can't really feel it. They're gonna be in the front, kind of blending in with your subscapularis fibers, and then there's some towards the bottom, which are more lax, allowing for that humerus to go through a lot of abduction because that joint capsule is a little bit looser. Uh, this is not gonna be purely accurate. You're not gonna easily be able to see what I'm doing, but basically, if you sink your fingertips all the way up following the shaft of the humerus and being mindful of the brachial plexus and artery. Some people say you can kind of get access a little bit to the inferior aspect of the glenohumeral fibers. Um, but like I said, that's gonna be pretty tricky. So more have a conceptual idea of where they are because of a possible dislocation in this area. And that's going to conclude our ligament palpation of that upper extremity. Continue with our palpation of ligaments of the upper extremity. We're now looking in the elbow complex. So we're on the lateral aspect. There's a couple ligaments that are all kind of blending together to create some stability for this elbow. Um, I'm identifying right now with my thumb, the lateral epicondyle of the humerus. And just distal to that is gonna be its joint line. So you can actually feel the little indentation of the joint line. And after that is the head of the radius. What you can ask your partner to do is a little supination and pronation. So she's just gonna do a little spin for me and I can actually feel the head turning right in this location. So between this lateral epicondyle of the humerus and the head of the radius, we actually have a couple different fiber directions of a radial collateral ligament of the elbow, otherwise known as the lateral collateral ligament of the elbow. So please don't get this confused. Um, there are lots of LCLs and MCLs in the body, even though majority of people just think it's the knee. This could be considered the LCL of the elbow, the lateral collateral, but also again, as I said, known as the radial collateral. So it's helping hold the head of the radius up against the humerus. So depending if you are in more of a flexed or extended position, you will start to tense up different fibers of this lateral collateral ligament. The next ligament very close to that, it's almost blending with it, is called the annular ligament. So if you picture my finger as the proximal part of the radius, there's a ligament that's gonna wrap all the way around the radius, holding it in space. So as you do supination and pronation, it holds it up against the ulna, but allows that radius to spin. So I'm grabbing the head of the radius, and a little bit more posterior than that is the ulna. So this ligament's gonna wrap around the head and then go back towards the ulna. So if you were to be cross-fibering it, you'd actually be going with the radius as you are cross-fibering the annular ligament of the elbow here. So again, this is help holding the head in place. If you have had a proximal radius dislocation, sometimes that will pop out from being underneath this annular ligament. So we wanna make sure that we can feel it and that it's snugly holding this radius in place. I'm just gonna change our camera angle a little bit here as I'm gonna roll her arm into some external rotation. And what we're gonna look at 
is going to be this right here as her olecranon, but I wanna go a little bit more proximal until I find the medial epicondyle of the humerus. So with the medial epicondyle right here, we're gonna be having the medial collateral ligament of the elbow that's going between the humerus and the ulna, and it also has kind of multiple fibers. This one is very tricky to feel because there's going to be some nerve and muscle going right over top of this location since these ligaments are quite deep. But an idea is that it's going from medial epicondyle towards the olecranon as it kind of spreads out. Your ulnar nerve is right over top of it, so please take caution when you go feeling for this one. If you push right in this area, you often hit what people refer to as the funny bone. So just please do not push on the ulnar nerve. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go closer to the actual olecranon. You're gonna push up gently, and then you're gonna go proximal distal, and I got actually a little bit of a strummable fiber. It's quite twitchy right in this area. So that is a portion of her medial collateral ligament heading in this direction. And the other portion of it is heading towards the coronoid process, which is really deep and underneath your common flexor tendon, which means, again, we're really not gonna be able to feel that, plus you have your median nerve in close proximity. So just understanding that in this area, there's kind of a Y or a V-shaped medial collateral ligament of the elbow. So we have the lateral and medial collateral and the annular that are forming the elbow complex ligaments we're going to discuss. And we're going to finish the upper extremity ligaments just by looking at the wrist. Now there is quite a few ligaments in this area. We're not going to cover all of them, so I'm just going to go through a couple. Um, we are going to start with one that's pretty commonly known. Uh, it's known as the flexor retinaculum, but you might also hear it as an intercarpal or the carpal ligament or anterior carpal ligament. So I'm gonna point out a couple bony landmarks of the carpal bones here. I have my thumb currently going around pisiform, go a little bit distal. We have the hook of hamate, and then on the opposite side, I have a scaphoid, and a little distal to that is trapezium. So in these four points, these are the attachments to the flexor retinaculum. I'm just gonna do a gentle like pincher grasp, and follow it. So we have multiple muscles of both thenar and hypothenar eminence that are attaching to this, as well as it's kind of making the roof for their structures going through the carpal tunnel, being near superficialis profundus and flexor pollicis longus. So being able to identify where this is, especially for people that have carpal tunnel syndrome, it's pretty essential. Plus when you're palpating the muscles of the hand, you need to be aware of it and possibly need to do some work on it for treatment. So again, this carpal ligament. We're gonna look at the ulnar and radial collateral of the wrist as well. Now, again, this is not always their only name. So I am finding the styloid process of the radius. And as I drop off of this radius, you land on scaphoid. I'm just gonna go into a handshake motion. So if I find the radius, I drop off. Sometimes people refer to this as the anatomical snuff box. So if I have her stick her thumb in the air, there's actually an indentation between these extensor tendons of the thumb, and you can relax. This is scaphoid, and there's a ligament, the radial scaphoid ligament, that's going between the radius and scaphoid. This one's often injured. If you go into too much ulnar deviation, you can get quite a bit of pain in this area. So again, I add a little ulnar deviation, and then I strum back and forth. And then again, there's gonna be a connection ligament that goes out towards trapezium. So the lateral collateral of the wrist, sometimes it's referred to, or again, individual, the radial scaphoid ligament, and towards the tra trapezium. On this opposite, in a similar location, we go to the medial aspect. Um, I can grab the head of the ulna right in here, but then off of it, there's going to be our styloid process of the ulna. So between the ulna, just after that, there is a cartilaginous disc or a meniscus, as some people refer to it. And then there's going to be the next carpal bone in line, which here is triquetrum. And then on top of that in the palm is going to be pisiform. So there is a ulnar meniscal triquetral joint that is often kind of mentioned and our medial collateral ligament. So if I go into some radial deviation and then relax that back and forth, so again, if somebody aggressively falls 
like so, that a person might start creating some damage on the outside, or it's actually really common to fall in a foosh motion where you fall on an outstretched hand and you get into extension and into radial deviation. And that's gonna wreck what's known as the triangulofibrocartilage joint complex in this area here. So a part of that being this ulnar collateral of the wrist in this area right in here. So take caution about kind of feeling this and then slightly add some radial deviation and see if there's a lot of discomfort or pain in this area in case a person has fall on an outstretched hand. There are, as I said, multiple ligaments going between all the different carpal bones and even between the radius and ulna and the radius ulna to other carpals. But for now, we're just gonna leave it at those ligaments of the wrist.